I did donor insemination over hundreds of people, and I only donated my own sample maybe nine or ten times. Ready to be grossed the heck out? Well, I hope you are, because today on Where Are They Now, we are talking about the infamous true crime story of Dr. Donald Klein, the fertility doctor and father of over 90 people who was the subject of Netflix's Our Father documentary. I'm Adam Andrews, and buckle up, kiddos, because we're going in. Dr. Donald Klein, born December 10th, 1938, received his undergraduate degree from Indiana University and his MD from Indiana University School of Medicine. After interning at IU Health Methodist Hospital, he served two years in the Air Force and 12 years as an inactive reserve. But it was in 1979 that Dr. Klein opened up his clinic on 2020 West 86th Street in Indianapolis. At the time, specialty infertility was a new thing, and as such, it gave Klein a certain advantage, becoming the go-to guy for couples suffering from infertility in the area. When frozen samples were not working for patients, they would go to Klein who used fresh samples and would perform insemination in the hour it was obtained, which optimized viability which gained him some respect in his field. He was one of the first doctors in the state to perform surgery with a laparoscope camera. So he had some credit to his name. Klein was a pioneer in his field. He was a strong pillar of his community with people generally having a great view of the doctor. And he worked as a doctor all the way until 2009 when he retired. In 2014, a former patient of the doctor, Jacoba Ballard, reviewed results she had received for an at-home DNA test. In that test, she discovered connections to about seven other half-siblings who all lived in the area. And it also revealed that all their biological fathers were actually one person, were none other than Dr. Donald Klein, her mother's fertility doctor. Now Ballard's mother didn't do anything wrong here. She wasn't running around in the night with Dr. Klein. In fact, it was kind of much worse than that. When six of the half siblings confronted the doctor, he admitted to using his own samples for the artificial inseminations without his patient's consent to inseminate the female parents of each one of the half siblings. Jacoba Ballard filed a complaint with the Attorney General of Indiana, and in 2015, an investigation began that didn't really end up going anywhere due to the fact that no matter how completely immoral Klein's actions were, the Indiana Attorney General Tim Delaney declined to prosecute because Indiana at the time didn't have a specific law considering what Klein did to be a sexual violation and because he was well known in the community as the preeminent fertility doctor in Indianapolis during his career. So instead, Ballard took to the media. She teamed up with Fox 59 anchor Angela Gonotti in order to investigate the story further. Ballard and Gnote discovered using DNA testing sites Ancestry.com and 23andMe that Dr. Donald Klein has fathered around 94 children using the same artificial insemination tactics that he did with Ballard's mother. Ballard also discovered that almost all of the female patients Dr. Klein did this to had no idea and were told that the donor specimens they received were anonymous medical residents and that no single donor sample was used used more than three times. In one case, Julie Harmon was born to a couple who had been told by Klein that the father's samples could be mixed with an anonymous donor, and when the mother did become pregnant, Klein told her it was only her husband's sample, which turned out not to be true. The pair also found that Dr. Klein had lied to the Attorney General's office in their investigation, with documents showing that he had told investigators, quote, I can emphatically say that at no time did I ever use my own sample for insemination, nor was I a donor. Which is a straight up lie, since after Fox 59 had aired a story covering his actions, Klein left a voicemail for his biological daughter Jacoba Ballard, contradicting what he had told the investigators. In the voicemail, he said, and I quote, in the voice I imagine he said it in, Uh, this is Dr. Klein. You know, I thought I was doing the right thing. I only donated my own samples nine or ten times. He then went on to try and ask for some help with the personal fallout of his actions, saying, quote, Um, my wife and I, uh, after 57 years of marriage, um, we have had a great deal of problems over this. She considers this adultery. I donated my samples. Gonna lose my wife. Our marriage will be over. Can you help? 
Armed with these contradictory and downright pathetic voicemails, Gannot went back to Attorney General of Indiana Tim Delaney and proved to him that Dr. Klein had lied. Delaney then went through with doing an independent DNA test that proved a 99.9997% probability of paternity. With this new DNA test and the voicemails, in 2016 Klein was charged with two charges of felony obstruction of justice for lying to the Attorney General's office about using his sample with just two victims, and for threatening Ballard with lawsuits for slander and libel. After pleading guilty, he was initially going to serve 365 days in jail, but it was reduced to a year of probation. He had to pay an incredibly small $500 fine and he lost his medical license, but by this time he was already retired. According to Fox 59, Klein has also paid over $1.3 million in settlements to his victims and their families, so at least there's that. As for what motivated him to do such a thing, he believed what he was doing was the right thing. I'm assuming he felt as though he was helping these parents have children, but apparently there may have been some kind of religious motivation behind it all as well. It is suspected that Klein is part of an extremist Christian sect that encourages followers to reproduce as prolifically as possible to meet God's mandate to be fruitful and multiply. Klein's clinic was decorated with Christian artwork and he would often repeat a passage from Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Something he actually said in a phone call to one of his children. Time also reported that Dr. Klein had his staff recite prayers together and advise patients to pray on their treatment choices. The doctor has confessed to using his own samples about 50 times from when he opened the clinic until the late 80s when frozen samples became more common. It also happened to be when DNA testing was more common as well. Hmm. What do you know? Klein also had all the records from that time wiped years ago, making the discovery of further offspring of his hard to do. His children have worried about the potential of accidental incest as they are all around the same age and live in the same area, meaning that had they not known, they could have formed relationships with people who were potentially their relatives through Dr. Donald Klein. Klein did claim to be in supreme health, but unfortunately, most of the biological offspring of the good doctor say that they share similar health problems of blood clotting and autoimmune disease. Furthermore, Klein's patients, or victims if you prefer, also feel as though they have been medically violated by the doctor, disgusted by the fact that samples were obtained only an hour before the procedures had actually happened. But unfortunately, due to the laws of the time, Klein wouldn't spend any time behind bars for what he did and the victims receive hardly any kind of peace of mind. Currently, Donald Klein is still living in his hometown of Indianapolis, Indiana. He keeps a not at all surprising low profile and still has, for some reason, many supporters in the community. Several of Klein's children also live in Indianapolis, some within blocks of their biological father's house. In 2018, a fertility fraud bill was signed into law started by Klein's biological children led by Matt White and his mother Liz White. The bill is to ensure that any misrepresentation in a medical procedure is considered a felony and it allows the doctor's victims, their spouses, and their children to sue in civil court. More specifically, Indiana became the first American state to make Klein's act illegal. You may be surprised and disappointed to learn that Dr. Klein's actions are not completely unique. Dutch doctor John Carbat has fathered 200 children using the same practices and died before he could be held accountable. And closer to our home, Dr. Norman Barwin also used his own samples, but also would distribute samples from the wrong donors, resulting in a lawsuit settled for $13.375 million with at least 16 people claiming to be his children, and at least 75 people being conceived with the wrong samples. The case of Dr. Donald Klein is one that leaves most people disgusted and slightly disturbed. I can certainly say that I am one of those people. What about you? Do you think Klein should have paid more for what he did? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here at Where Are They Now, and feel free to suggest more true crime cases for us to cover in the future. For now, I'm Adam Andrews, you can find me on Instagram in the description below, and until next time, stay safe and well informed out there, kiddos. Adios.